Before I go, let's go back to this conversation and this debate. The Joe Biden administration in the United States has gone back on its word of no travel bans. The U.S. has imposed a travel ban on South Africa and other countries uh, in the African, on the African continent, uh, several on the African continent, following the new Omicron variant being identified. This despite their criticism on their predecessor, Donald Trump, last year for doing the same. Let's bring in international relations expert, Professor John Strimlaw, uh, to weigh in on this particular situation. Needless to say, uh, Prof, uh, Joe Biden is taking a hammering, particularly domestically, from the GOP um, about this particular ban. And the context is that Trump did exactly the same um, around about a year ago while um, uh, Joe Biden was preparing to take over as U.S. president. And uh, Biden criticized Trump and said a wall will not stop this virus. But it seems he is building a wall. Well, he certainly is uh, taking, as he says, a precautionary measure. But uh, I guess Cyril Ramaphosa last evening was being diplomatic when he said he was deeply disappointed. I would be more inclined to, to be pissed off, to use a, a vernacular, because uh, this is outrageous. Uh, South African scientists have been praised by the WHO and by, indeed, even uh, Secretary of State, U.S. Secretary of State uh, Anthony Blinken, when he spoke with Nalandi Pandor, Dr. Pandor, uh, two days ago, uh, he said, and I quote, uh, Blinken specifically praised South Africa's scientists for quick identification of the Omicron uh, variant and South Africa's government for its transparency in sharing that. This is a moral imperative for scientists to share this information. And for this bravery, they're rewarded with isolation. It was outrageous that uh, these travel bans have been put on, but it's politics. Yeah, and, and that point where you leave it is where I want to pick it up, uh, Prof. It's politics. How are we to understand it as, as outsiders? Um, is it domestic politics? And many would say, I mean, you know, when Joe Biden was elected, this was precisely uh, what he and Kamala Harris were saying, that they're going to restore American values at various points. They had been talking about restricting, um, you know, people from other countries from entering the U.S. being anti-American uh, values. Um, how are we to understand it within the domestic politics? Well, within the domestic politics, uh, they're very polarized. And the, the, the gap between the Trumpists and the Republicans uh, and the Biden and Democrats is, shockingly to me, narrow, uh, because uh, I, I just don't understand how Donald Trump can, other than appealing to racism and white supremacy, be a very resonant with, uh, with constituents. But nevertheless, uh, Biden, I think, was fearful that he would be criticized for not taking, quote, precautionary measures, but without regard for the travel and cost implications for a country like South Africa, and it's already just barely recovering from a terrible uh, uh, stint of tourism collapse. And, and now to have this on top of it, when in fact the WHO, and I, and I quote David Nabarro, who was a spokesman there, gave a, gave a, a a Sky News interview a, a day or two ago, and he was scathing in his criticism of imposing these bans, which scientifically and practically do no good. Now, Joe Biden lifted the ban only three weeks ago against travel from South Africa to the United States, the condition being that people would have to be vaccinated. That's not an unfair requirement in my mind because we have vaccines available and people should be vaccinated as President Ramaphosa eloquently and carefully delineated last night. I mean, that was a real statesmanlike speech that he gave the nation last night. And I wish American politicians would be as honest and forthright about the science as, as President Ramaphosa is, but that they aren't. And this has become a political football. It was a political football under Donald Trump, and it's a political football now as Biden tries to navigate the waters of uh, the 2022 congressional election and on to the presidential election the year, two yeah. years after that, 2024. So, uh, you know, I'm sorry that it's this way. I'm embarrassed by it. Um, it, is, it is counterproductive. 
and he has been roundly criticized by people uh, from the WHO, but they don't resonate with the voters. Yeah. Uh, this is not a good day for democracy. And, and lastly, Prof, just as you talk about the political football, one of the things that I noticed is that reporting from the United States says even, quote unquote, America's doctor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, had said to CNN um, on Friday that a travel ban is unlikely only for him to, I guess, in a way, find himself being sidelined in terms of the actual decision making. Well, Biden was on uh, vacation in Nantucket, and he uh, was obviously briefed by his staff that he ought to preemptively at least take a cautionary mo note. I, I, I want to see uh, how quickly the bans are going to be lifted. I, I, I don't condone them at all, and, and it, was a, it was a silly short-run political move, starting with Boris Johnson in the UK, by the way. You know, the South African scientists within 72 hours got the word out to the world as they should, and then they're rewarded by, by, by Boris Johnson the very next day putting on a travel ban when he has been so irresponsible in his handling of the pandemic within the United Kingdom. So, I, I, you know, it, it, it just bothers the heck out of me, but this is democratic politics, and I'll have to give a lot of hard thought to this because I don't think authoritarianism is any alternative, but I must say that uh, at least President Ramaphosa last night was dealing honestly and forthrightly with the South African people, and for that he ought to be congratulated. All right, uh, Professor John Strimlow, your time and your expertise is always appreciated.